What is up everybody, Dak here, and today I'm going to be talking about how quickly a speaker cone accelerates. Now, unlike previous episode, uh, where it was traveling at about 5 meters per second average, which isn't too fast, this thing accelerates pretty crazy fast. Um, I'm going to be using two equations. Uh, right here is the generic uh, linear acceleration, which is change in velocity over time. This is a yeah, general equation. And to find its maximum acceleration, I'm going to be using this equation right here. So first off, we're going to find the average acceleration. Uh, change in velocity over time. So what is the time? Well, here's one wave. And if you've watched the previous episode, which is where I show how I found the velocity, um, you can see that the graph I found for velocity uh, goes from fastest here, then slowest in the middle, and fastest in the opposite direction down the bottom. So, as you can see here, it goes from going its fastest forward to its fastest backward in one one hundredth of a second, which is half of 50 hertz. So, for the speaker, by the way, I'm doing 50 hertz and 2 inches of excursion. So, 50 hertz and 50 millimeters of excursion. So, here you can see it takes a hundredth of a second to change velocity. And now to get the change in velocity. Uh, once again, we found that the highest velocity forward was 7.85 meters per second, and the highest velocity backward was negative 7.85 meters per second. So, to get the change in velocity, you just subtract one from the other. So, you find speed one minus speed two. And because the double negative makes a positive, you find that its change in velocity is 15.7 meters per second. So if we put them all into the equation, we find that the change in velocity, 15.7 meters per second, over the time of 0.01 seconds, we get an acceleration of 1,570 meters per second squared, which is roughly 160 Gs. So... A centrifuge, remember, which is the one that spins people around and knocks them out, that's usually around 10 Gs. A speaker cone is feeling 16 times that. Isn't that crazy? And that's just its average too, not even its peak. So to find the peak excursion, uh, sorry, the peak acceleration, uh, once again, this is what I showed in the previous one, which is, this is the amplitude or the excursion of the driver and then I turned that into a velocity graph where when it was traveling fastest through the middle, it was actually reaching its highest velocity. And now we're going to find the acceleration graph. Now to find acceleration, acceleration in, is change in velocity over time, right? So here you can see on the velocity graph that the change in velocity at the top is virtually zero. It's really only changing a slight amount uh, compared to the time which is of course along the top and then you'll find that a bit down you can see that now there's a bit of change in velocity here but in the same amount of time but through the middle we get the biggest change in velocity over the same amount of time so it's the middle of the graph that has the highest change in velocity and if we log this graph where it goes where the highest acceleration is at the top of the curve, then we can actually get this cos curve. And that's why we have cos in the equation here, because this sine curve gets turned back into the cos curve. So you can see that where it's changing the fastest downward here, it's accelerating backward, which is why we have a negative number here. And of course, where it's not changing in velocity, it's in the middle of the graph, which represents zero. So we get this nice graph here. And we can use this graph to see that its acceleration is at the top, where it's going fastest, and it's at its highest point at zero. At time equals zero seconds, it's at its highest point of acceleration. So now this is quite nice because uh, wt, which is this part of the equation, uh, because t equals zero, and 
and you multiply anything by zero, you get zero. So you just get cos times well, cos zero, which is one. Now that's good because now we can scrap the cos wt. So now the equation just becomes w squared a. And we already know all the information. So we already know that the frequency, which is this number here, is 50 hertz. So w or omega equals 2 times pi times the frequency, which is 314, right? That's, I think it's unitless, so you can just say it's 314. And to get the acceleration, it's 314 squared times the amplitude. And once again, the amplitude is its distance from the middle out or distance from the middle in, which is 0 0.025 meters. Now, this is crucial because in physics, you've got to use the right units and then all the equations just work seamlessly. So 0 0.025 meters, which is the same as 2.5 centimeters, 25 millimeters, or about the same as one inch. And yeah, we get out this answer here. So the maximum acceleration of a speaker is 2,464.9 meters per second squared, or about 2,500 meters per second squared. And once again, to find the Gs, it's 251 Gs. This thing has 251 Gs. And just as a fun fact, um, if this was a linear acceleration, if we take the average number and it was a linear acceleration, which was around 1500 meters per second, I think. I'll see it on the next slide. Yeah, 1570. That means in one second, if it was accelerating linearly, it would be going almost five times the speed of sound and will have traveled 750 meters in that time. Isn't that crazy? Like there's speakers don't travel very fast, but they accelerate like crazy. So, and also we can put those numbers now into F equals MA. Say for the average high SPL 15 inch driver, it has a moving mass, which is the cone and the voice coil of 500 grams, which is 0.5 kilograms. So to find the force, in newtons we plug them into the equation f equals ma force equals mass 500 grams times acceleration so the average force applied is 785 newtons which is the same as an 80 kilogram person standing on the cone or about 180 pounds and to find the maximum force, so remember this is the force when it's all the way out and is being turned around. So this is just its peak force. We get um, 1,232 newtons, which is the same as a 126 kilogram person standing on the cone or pushing on the cone. You know, that's how much force, raw force is on it. And that number is, I think, roughly 300 pounds. Yeah, something like 300 pounds. So, yeah, just crazy forces. But you might be thinking to yourself, that really is a lot of force. How come, like, where does this energy come from? Like, surely you're not always needing this much force in newtons from the voice call like if you put your hand on a driver it will slow it down a bit it will not move quite as much and the reason why is because in a speaker you're not running it in a vacuum uh, and also it does have a bit of spring to it so there's two things resonance which is when the cone is at its resonance frequency it's a bit like pushing someone on a swing uh, all the electricity going through the voice call needs to do to keep it moving in and out is just a gentle push a speaker has a bit of resistance to it though um, if you ever push a speaker in and let go you'll notice it doesn't just vibrate like a spring it has a bit of damping so all you need to do is you need to 
reduce the effect of the damping. That's it. All that's happening at its resonance is the energy going in is being damped. So that's why you're not actually putting 700 newtons of force from the voice coil onto it, even though it is accelerating that quickly. It's all nice and synchronized. So uh, something else too, air pressure. Um, a lot of damping to a speaker is provided by the air. So if you had a small speaker like a 10 inch free air, it would have a lot less damping and would be a lot more springy than say a 21, a 24, a 32 even. If you had speakers that big, it would take a lot more energy to operate them free air because a lot of that energy is going into pushing air around. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope I got your brain juices flowing a bit and you've learnt. And uh, next episode, I'll be doing more force, a bit more in force, now electrical force, and also the amount of energy that goes into a speaker. So I'll have a quick look at the impedance graph and what that means. If you found this video interesting, uh, check out the de previous video, definitely. It's got some key information used in this one in it, although it's a bit more boring because it was 4 a.m. and I just wanted to do it just to get it out in there. And also like and subscribe if you feel like it and keen for more content. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.